Premiering on October 8, 1972, Iron King is a Tokutato hero series that challenge many of the conventions associated to the genre to deliver a fun, accessible, and action-packed story. Starring Shoji Ishibashi in the role of Gentaro Shizuka, a member of Japan's National Security Forces, and Mitsuo Hamada, who plays Goro Kirishima, Gentaro's partner who is secretly Iron King, the series storyline focuses on these two protagonists' journey as they make their way through Japan to counter the plots of multiple evil organizations. The show was broadcast by TBS on Sunday nights as part of the Takeda Hour and would have a total run of 26 episodes. Iron King was an original series by Nobuhiroshi Productions, which subcontracted the actual work to Senkosha Productions. Senkosha was also the company behind the preceding Tokutatsu series, Silver Mask, and is best known for their work on the Super Robot Red Baron, Mac Baron, and Gam Baron series. By the time of the series production, the Tokutatsu hero genre had matured and many of the series that were still being produced generally stuck to past conventions to ensure they met the expectations of their target audiences and sponsors' needs. But feeling there was a real opportunity to break through the clutter with a different approach, Iron King screenplay writer Mamoru Sasaki, whose previous writing credits include contributions to Ultraman, Ultra 7, Ultraman Tarot, and Silver Mask, decided to take several detours from the usual formula. The most visible change was not to make the title character and giant hero, Iron King, the protagonist of the show. Instead, Gentaro Shizuka would be the program's lead character and presented as being just as capable of taking on the giant monsters as Iron King, to the point where throughout the series he is the one to defeat each of their giant opponents with nothing more than his sheer bravery, skills, and special weapon, the Iron Belt, which is able to transform to a sword or whip form. In addition to being made a secondary character, Iron King's civilian alter ego, Goro Kirishima, is presented in a way that stands in sharp contrast to the typical transforming hero, who inspires confidence and have a strong on-screen presence. In fact, at the beginning of the series, he shies away from getting involved in fights with enemy forces and tends to act nervously whenever giant monsters appear. Also, unlike other giant hero series of this era, which typically incorporated the visible presence of a special organization as a partner and support to the giant heroes, Iron King's National Security Forces remain mostly invisible as a background element. In fact, they don't appear in show until episode 19. This results in Gentaro and Goro consistently being presented in isolation of any support forces or communications from the organization, essentially making this a story about how the duo single-handedly takes down several threats to Japan, which throughout the series would include three different groups. Between episodes 1 and 10, Gentaro and Goro's mission is to counter the forces of the Shiranui clan, who are trying to fulfill a 2,000-year-old ambition to conquer Japan by using their 10 giant robots. After they are defeated in episode 10, a new organization is introduced, Phantom Opposition Party, which is led by the Phantom Militia. They are the antagonists of the series between episodes 11 and 18, and like the Shiranui clan, they rely on giant robots to carry out their mission. After Gentaro destroys the Phantom Militia's base of operations, a threat from outer space arrives, the Titanians. They are a strange organization whose members have the ability to grow to giant form and transform into giant insect-like monsters. While superficially and thematically different, the battle between these three groups and Gentaro and Goro follow similar templates. 
the enemy forces make their presence known, which leads to an early battle between our heroes and their monster, which would then be followed by a more conclusive fight at the end of the episode. Regardless of the format and the different styles of monsters used, every one of these scenes have something in common. They are fun and action-packed. The bulk of the action tends to focus on Gintaro, who takes on all the ground forces before turning his attention to his giant adversaries. Throughout these fights, he leverages a wide range of martial arts infused fighting alongside some great stunt work. When necessary, he also uses a personal weapon that can change between a sword or whip form and allows him to directly take on all the robots featured in the series. When Iron King appears, the action is staged in a wide range of settings that help convey the large scale of these battles. To the first half of the series, Iron King's role is to neutralize the giant robots to help Gentaro deliver the final blow that will destroy them. But as the series progressed, Iron King started to become more active and critical in the defeat of the robots, with his first direct win taking place in episode 16. The special effects work that supports Iron King and the various robot monsters they fight is excellent, with some particularly noteworthy moments and sets. These include the theme park in episode 6, the water dam in episode 7, and this highway system in episode 17, which features several moving cars. The monster designs are inconsistent in originality and execution, but there are some standout ones. For example, I really enjoy Tongazaurus, which is the monster that Goro and Gintaro take on in episode 12. The size of the costume and associated props is impressive, but the production team goes above and beyond by adding a small dinosaur tank that can deploy from its underbelly. While it looks ridiculous, it adds an inventive touch to what could have otherwise been just another dinosaur monster. At the core of the show's appeal though, it's not the robots, Iron King, or action scenes. It's the dynamic banter and relationship between Goro and Gintaro. Their drastically different personalities and skills translate to unexpectedly fun character moments and development that at times outshine everything else in the story. It helps that each episode is mostly centered on the two characters due to the absence of a larger recurrent cast. That is not to say there aren't additional support characters, especially in the first 10 episodes, but the small number of them helps keep Gentaro and Goro's banter in focus and the story moving at a steady pace. The majority of the supporting cast throughout the show is made up by a series of popular actresses and female idols from this period. This include Shieko Morikawa, who played Yukiko, a traveling companion to Gentaro and Goro through the first six episodes of the series and acted as an undercover agent for the Shiranui clan. Previous to this work, the actress appeared in the original Kamen Rider TV series and Youth on the Court where she played the role of Makoto Toyo. After wrapping up its original TV run, Iron King would go on to be rebroadcast on multiple occasions, with its 1985 re-airing being noteworthy for launching an urban legend about there being a final episode of Ultraman, where the hero went berserk and destroyed the town. This is in fact due to this re-airing ending with an oddly edited version of episode 25 that cut out the to be continued message that appears in the final seconds to make way for an announcement for the premiere of Machine Man which would air the following week. This particular broadcast was actually uploaded to YouTube last year. To watch it, use the link in the description below. In addition to being played again on Japanese television, Iron King has also been released multiple times on home video. These releases include a Toho Laserdisc box in 1990, a second Laserdisc collection in 1998, and a VHS set in 1999. 
In 2001, the first DVD set was released for the series, which would be followed by another DVD set in 2006 that featured multiple color and scratch corrections. A high-end remaster under the supervision of the Digital Ultra Project was also released in 2011. Iron King has also seen an official DVD release in North America. Produced by BCI Eclipse, Iron King The Complete Series was made available in November of 2007. A more economical version of this set would be released in 2010 by Mill Creek Entertainment. During its original run on television, Iron King was also supported by various manga serializations across numerous great specific magazines published by Shugakukan. The show also was supported by several merchandising tie-ins that included everything from action figures to books and music records. And while the character is yet to resurface in modern media, Iron King was teased as the potential next Senkosha Tokutatsu Hero series to be rebooted at the end of the 2017 movie Brainstorm. If you are a fan of Ultraman or other giant Tokutatsu Hero series and haven't watched Iron King, I can't recommend this series highly enough. It has fun characters, explosive action scenes, and very simple stories that make it easy to just sit back and enjoy the spectacle.